He opens the back door. She is spread eagle <laughs> in the back seat. You can now taste this it. This video is either going to do well or people are going to turn turned it off a long time ago. The ending of this story is great, though, I'm telling you. Okay. There's a punchline to this whole thing. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself if you watch this. <laughs> you're still watching. <laughs> and you're Catholic. You should go to confession. All right. Thanks so much for doing this. <laughs>Hey, this is Matt Cox, and I'm here with Jeff Crean, and we're, Jeff was on, told his story about, um, about two months ago. We kept in touch, and I thought I'd have him back because he, you know, he's got some other stuff that he, we, I think would be funny, and we talk about, and also, I started a Clips channel, and I started a TikTok, and everything that I put on there with Jeff has actually done really well, so he's, TikTok gold. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I, I called him up and said, "Hey, you got to come back on the show." And he said, "Absolutely." So here he is. He's going to tell us uh, an interesting story about uh, you know morality that he. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's going to be about. And uh, yeah, doing the right thing and just you know living a good clean life. <laughs> So, okay, yeah. really? I'm, I, I forgot to bring my halo and my Bible no. with me, you know, not that I've ever owned either. Or, that could or be the thumbnail. Will. Yeah, that would be the thumbnail. That could be the thumbnail. We can get a picture of him with a Bible. Yeah. Going, and we'll put it, you can put a halo above, over with him. Blazing flames coming out of my ears or something, because yeah. I will spontaneously burst into flames. Uh, so, anyhow, yep, thanks for having me back. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know Good times. obviously the viewers last time, some of them really hated me, which was awesome. Yeah awesome i love that i was very discouraged though that more didn't hate me so i think i have to try even harder to be more obnoxious what you know what i think i i i actually talked to bozak about this going through and getting all of the most vicious comments about like me or oh, him yeah. or you oh, yeah. and then do a whole channel where you just read the comments because some of them are so over the top. Oh god, they're they were awesome they're comical they really I mean, are you just can't stop laughing you're like this guy really really put some time into this some of these guys wrote like paragraphs like it was like the foreword of a book that they had written and i'm thinking wow how long how much time did you spend thinking about this and then editing it as you wrote it because none of these people were intelligent enough to spell that well huh. you know how long did you put into actually you know composing this whole diatribe that you just put on there to try and slam somebody yeah. and still make absolutely no sense whatsoever yeah. it was wonderful to read that stuff it was it's awesome i loved it yeah. i loved it that's YouTube. Yep, that is. That's the internet. So, yeah, I'm back. And, you know, obviously last time I was here, I alluded to some things in my life. But I tended to avoid those because we were trying to tell, you know, uh, a wholesome story last time yep. about a young man who came up from nothing and, and built a, a small empire through, you know, morally good choices and, and good business practices yeah. and, yeah. you know, all of that. Yeah, you're not buying this no. one either again, I know, because you were here and heard the story last time. So... I figured I'd come back and I'd tell you one of these detailed stories about one of my experiences. Adventures. In life. Adventures, yeah. experiences. So let's go back in time. Ooh, we're going to go back to, I was 23 or 24. I don't remember the exact age. God, it was so long ago. Um, it was the late 90s. Let's just say that. It was, yeah. it was probably 96 or 97. And for those of you who watched me before, you'll know that at that point in my life, I was just really getting into my wrestling career. Still very young in the career, but working a lot. But I was very heavily into the, uh, the consulting industry, working with bars, nightclubs, and restaurants. So I was doing really well. Um, throughout the course of this time, I'd, I'd made a lot of different friends. And I was spending a lot of time in the gym because I was young, so I was, I was working out a lot. And I had, I had met a group of guys that were like total juice heads. But they were good guys, and we all became really good friends. One of them, I swear to God, he had to be like the steroid king of New Jersey. Like, if you needed it, he had it. it just everything. And, I mean, he was so juiced up that if you, like, took a pin and hit him in the bicep with it, you thought it was going to explode like a water balloon. Um, but just such a really, really funny guy, really great guy. So we ended up all hanging out at the gym a lot together, and they started coming to my wrestling shows. And through getting to know him, uh, his name was Tony. Um, I'm not gonna say his last name because there may be people out there still looking for him. Um, I, we come to find out how smart he really was about 
getting and selling steroids. You know, everybody else at that time, even like, you know, look, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I did a shitload of coke back in the 80s and 90s, too. I think everybody did. But it was like you, you talk to these drug dealers or these guys where you were getting this stuff and they were all stupid about it. Oh, I'm buying from this guy who buys from this guy who buys from this guy. Right. So you're getting the shit fourth hand. It's been stepped on a million times. You don't even know if it's even real anymore. And Tony was just a pure steroid guy. Like he was a juice head, muscle head guy. And all he dealt with really was steroids. Painkillers a little bit too, because bodybuilders and athletes are, you know, are always in pain. But he was smart about it. He figured out that he could get everything he needed from Mexico. Right. And literally at that time, you could go to a pharmacy in yeah. Mexico and just walk up and go, I want this, this. It was like going to Walmart and you just had a shopping list. Give the, the pharmacist, if that's what you wanted to call them, American dollars, and you could bring it home. Again, the trick was getting it back I was in. Say, how do you get it across well, the board? Yeah, we'll get back to that one. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're interested in getting a painting done by me, my contact information is in the description box. Enjoy the video. So I end up talking to Tony, and he's telling me this whole thing. Well, what, what is he doing? Like once every two months, he takes a trip to El Paso, Texas, which is right across. The, it's the sister city of Juarez, Mexico. Literally, one's on one side of the border, the other one's on the other side of the border. Right. The crick of the Rio Grande, because that's pretty much what it is at that point in the state. Just a crick runs between the two of them. So he's telling us this story. I go down there you know, once every two months, and I load up and I come back, and he's like, you guys got to come. He's like, first of all, he goes, El Paso's an awesome city. He's like, great food, great this and that. He goes, but Juarez is like, it's like an animal down there. It's like, the, you, it's like you, you wouldn't believe it. So he's trying to convince us to do this for like four or five months. And finally, somehow my schedule worked out where I had like a whole week or something. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We'll, we'll go. What the hell? So it's me, him, and, and three other guys. So there's basically five or, well, there was five of us all together. The one guy didn't come. It was supposed to be six. The one guy backed out the last minute because he was chicken shit. So there's five of us all together. And, you know, what do you do? You, you hop a plane in Philadelphia and you fly to El Paso, Texas. Understanding, too, that at the time we're 24 years old, we're party animals. I'm actually, at that point, really making some pretty good money. So we're pretty much fucked up the whole time. This is just alcohol and drugs and binging like crazy because everybody's got the week off. We get off the plane in El Paso or, you know, we have no idea what we're doing. Tony's the one who's done this like a million times, and he hasn't really explained to us how this all works. So he's like, all right, we're going to hop in a cab, and uh, we're going to go and stay at this Best Western the best Western literally is like right on the border. You're looking out your window at Mexico across the river. And it's hilarious because he's like, I like to stay here because late at night we're going to watch all the stupid people try to cross the border. I'm like, what are you talking about? Crossing the border? Like there's fences and everything. And he's like, no, no, no. You'll get a kick out of this. So the first night we stay in El Paso and we hit a couple country Western bars and, you know, we're the, the, the gringos from, from like New York, Philadelphia. So like nobody's even talking to us. Like it's obvious why we're there. Right. We're not Texans. We don't live there. We're not Mexican. We're, there's no no practical reason for us to be here whatsoever, except for the fact that we're going to go and buy drugs in Mexico. Right. And apparently it is so common there that they just like there were people at the bars in El Paso telling us, well, where, what, what, what pharmacy are you looking for? What, what exactly do you need? We'll, we'll tell you where you need to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, for 50 bucks, I'll give you directions to the place. We'll write it down. And Tony's like, no, no, no. I've done this a million times. I've got, don't listen to these people. It's okay. <clears throat> so we're partying the first night in El Paso, having a good time. Totally fucked up out of our brains. I mean, I probably did enough blow that weekend to fund a small country. Um, washing it down with whiskey, just trying to keep myself going. So I think it was like a Friday night. Tony says, uh, we're going to go over to, to, to Juarez. Okay. Let me digress for a second because I need to explain something about the border. First of all, let me tell you about Juarez, Mexico. Juarez, Mexico is, is one of those places that you only see in movies. People talk about Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, it's evil. Cartels run it. It's horrible. Bad things happen there. Fuck that. Tijuana is for tourists. Juarez, Mexico is literally the armpit of a country. Mm -hmm. Every night, everyone from the El Paso side streams across the board. And I mean, I'm not kidding you. There had to be 50 to 100,000 people walk, just walking across this bridge. You walk across the bridge into Juarez because you can party and do whatever the fuck you want in this city. It is lawless. It is insane. 
and it is a huge party criminal mecca. So everybody from the U.S. and, and the El Paso area literally would just walk across this bridge. There's two INS security guys, whatever you want to call them, standing at a gate that is wide open. And going across, they don't even care. They're not asking you for anything. They don't give a damn. Just go right ahead. And I mean, there are just, I can't, it was like leaving a stadium after the Super Bowl. There were just so many people streaming over this bridge. And they're all 18, 19, 20 years old. They're our age. And they're just going partying. And it is insane because the whole time I'm thinking to myself, man, like everybody on TV, you talk about how hard it is to get in and out of America. And, and it's like the, these people are just freely crossing this bridge like it's nothing. And you say, oh, wait, you're going into Mexico. Yeah, I was going to say. No, no, no. It's the same shit coming back at the end of the night. And, and, I, and I, 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 you know, as far as we were concerned coming back, we had all this shit on us, too. Right. And Tony's going, don't worry about it. What do they, you mean, don't worry about it? They're not going to check you. They're just, you're just going to go with the crowd. And- you just go with the crowd. And it's like one out of every 100 people, they'll be like, where are you from? Philadelphia. You got your ID on you? Yes. Didn't even ask to see it. Okay, go ahead. The hilarious thing about this was, as we're, as we're crossing over into Mexico the first night, this is where Tony's going, no, 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 you got to watch down the river. The Rio Grande at this point is literally like it's a concrete canal. It looks like the L.A. River, right. more or less. And there's fences on both sides, and the bridge goes over this. And there's, a, there's like two or three bridges in El Paso and Juarez, but there's like a main one. What was funny is as we're walking over the bridge, and it's very slow going because it's all these people crossing over, you look down, and what you see are illegal immigrants trying to climb over the fence and make a run across this concrete creek to the other side. And INS is just snatching them. Boom, boom, boom. They're in trucks out there. This was amazing to me because I'm watching thousands of them streaming back across the border and nobody's being checked. Why would you risk or take the chance of trying to go over the fence and across the creek when obviously you could just... Even if you got caught once and sent back over, I'm pretty sure you're going to make it the next time. Because it was just, there was no stopping anybody. It was just this free flow of people going both ways. It was insane to me. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this is where the immigration problem in this country comes from. Because people were just walking across the border like it was nothing. Most of them are fucked up. Because it's the end of the night when you're all coming back. Everybody's all fucked up. So at any rate, we're, we're crossing. And, you know, again... You know, we're in El Paso. You know, we're all six foot or taller. So we're like the largest dudes in the line because Mexican people are like four foot nothing and a half. And we're just watching over this crowd. And I mean, we're sticking out like sore thumbs because obviously I dress like a gaudy asshole, as you can all tell right now. And this hasn't changed in 30 years. You know, I've got big arms. I wear these shirts. I have these hats. I have the glasses. This is how I look. This is my look. Obviously, Matt gets a kick out of this because he's over here snickering and, and, you know. By the way, when I first what came, is, your, is that Heather so seems so well put together and sophisticated? <laughs> and then there's does, me. The, I, yeah. The minute I got here today, the first thing Matt does is take a photo of me. He sends it to his girlfriend. Look at what this asshole's wearing. <laughs> Look at this. Then he sends it to my girlfriend. How did you let him out of the house wearing this? What was her response to you? <laughs> she said, "It's not my turn to watch him." There you go. So, at any rate, I've looked this way my whole life. Um. So you can't miss us. We're staying out like sore thumbs. So the first night we're there, we go into El Paso. We stop at a couple bars. And I mean, I discovered this is where AIDS came from. These are the kind of places where, like, any new diseases in the world, this is where they came from. Every single bar that you walk into is just a slime pit of filth. Right. You don't want to sit on the bar stools. You don't want to lean on a bar. You just took, I didn't even venture into a bathroom because if, if, the, if the bar was that bad, how bad could the bathroom be? But booze, and this was, you know, in the 90s, you could get whatever Mexican beer they were selling you for like a quarter. It was like 50 cents here. Boom. And now you understood why everybody wanted to go party there. Because you could have a job pumping gas and still be able to party like a king in Suarez because everything was just so cheap. You know, I think maybe the whole night we spent like 20 bucks between four of us and we were fucked up. Right. By the time we, we left the bar. So Tony says, okay, you know, it's, it's like two o'clock in the morning. Tony goes, okay, we got to go. We got to get the stuff. We got to get the first night. We got Because we got to do this like three or four nights. Yeah, because he, you're bringing it a little bit at a time, right? Yeah, that's what we thought too. Um, you know, 
Tony apparently was very successful at selling drugs because if he had to come over every two months and get stuff and the amount of stuff that we got right. is what he sells in two months. Holy shit. I was surprised this man wasn't living in a mansion driving a Lamborghini. So he says, okay, we're going to go to the to the first pharmacy place. So um, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm thinking, what fucking pharmacy is open at two in the morning? Again, my being naive right. and having never done this before, apparently they're all open. At 2 a.m. in the morning. Because they're basically drug dealers. This is when you go to, to buy what you're getting. All right. So we end up walking like three or four blocks, which that's just an adventure in itself. I mean, I don't care who you are. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how tough you think you are. There are literally dudes just standing on the corner with, you know, 57 Magnums sticking out the, the belts of their pants. They're, and they're looking at you like, if we think you have money, we're going to kill you and take your money. Right. And they're all just scoping you out. And then, I mean, this has got to be the place like, I, I truly believe that this is where sex trafficking originally got started. Because if you're a young woman in this town partying, you are a target to get kidnapped and taken and end up in the movie taken if your father was Liam Neeson. Um, other than that, you'll be some Saudi prince's little cocktail for a while. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video. Wanted to let you guys know one of the ways I pay for all of this is through Patreon subscriptions. So if you join my Patreon at the top tier, you get a different painting every single month. The contact information for Patreon is in the description box. Back to the video. So it's two o'clock in the morning. We get to this pharmacy. It's like, here's a guy behind the counter. It's literally a real pharmacy. Like apparently people do go there to get like NyQuil or whatever too. Up. There's a guy behind the counter. He's got on a white coat. He looks like a pharmacist. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? What do you want? Tony just slaps down this list on paper. He goes, I want all of this. This guy doesn't even think twice. He starts going into the back and just pulling stuff out. Here's a box of this, a box of this. Box. Before you know it, we've got like four big boxes of stuff. And I'm looking at Tony going, fuck, are we going to get this back? Like, what, what, I, we can't. He's, Dude, we're just going to walk with it. What do you mean we're just gonna, we're just going to walk with it? Jesus. What? Yeah. Tony, I'm going to go to jail for 10 years here. You know? Yeah, I'd be too scared. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about it. We're just going to, nah, well, you have to remember too, we're fucked up too. All right. We're drunk, we're high. It's just a kind of, so it's like all inhibition and all rational thought goes out of your head after like a minute or two of, I'm going to go to jail, <laughs> but it's going to be fun trying it. Couple big boxes. I mean, pick yourself. We get all done. Tony gives the guy the money. Tony says, I'll be back tomorrow. Here's what I need for tomorrow. Can you please have it ready for us? Yeah, hey, no problem. Apparently, Tony and this guy have been doing business for years. We take these boxes. They're regular brown boxes, all the stuff's inside of them. And we're heading back to El Paso. And we're walking up the street and bullshitting with people. And the guys with guns are looking at us because they know what we've got. They're like, you know, they know we've got something. But apparently... It's in their best interest to make sure that we get across the border because we're sustaining the economy of that area. Yeah. People like us are fueling the economy there. So let's make sure that the white gringos with all the drugs get back across the border because we need them to come back. <clears throat> we get to the border. It's like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning at this point. My buzz is starting to wear off a little bit. And I'm like, all right, this could really be a bad idea. Like, really? Tony's like, oh, don't worry about it. We're good. Okay. Walking up, here are the two agents at this gate that is literally just wide open. Obviously, again, and I point out the fact that we look different than everybody else because we're standing out in this crowd. Here's the other issue. Like, we are literally standing out. You can't miss us. We do not blend in with everybody else in this area. We're just, you know, we're a head above everybody else. We look like me. It's We're, we're just like, we're the guys you want to stop. Yeah. As we're getting closer, I'm just thinking, well, it's wonder how idea. You know, Leavenworth is nice or, you know, wherever, whatever the local prison here is, I'm sure 10 years there is going to be a lot of fun, be good, you know, life experience, whatever. Um, we get up to the gate. First officer just looks at us, sees the boxes, looks around, just does this real quick thing. Where are you guys from? Philadelphia. Oh, cheesesteaks. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there once. Nice place. How long are you guys here for? A couple days. Listen, have you been to this bar? No, not yet, you know. Okay, you should check it out while you're here. Have a nice night, guys. Walk right across. Holding boxes. Holding the boxes. Never asked to see our IDs. Never, just where you're from. 
Philadelphia. Cheese steaks. These are just regular cardboard boxes? like Just, yeah, they're brown or... card, like, it's like an Amazon box, but it doesn't say Amazon on it. And inside the box is all of the... The little vials. The little yeah. vials, pills, whatever the hell he got, his plethora of stuff. And it's just, the lid's just folded over like you do the tri- yeah. the four-fold lid thing, and we're just carrying it. But it's painfully obvious. Like, everybody else is going to party, we're coming back with boxes. Everyone else is coming back drunk and fucked up, we're coming back drunk and fucked up, but with, with boxes. boxes. Yeah. The cop knew. He's just like, cool. He just didn't want to do the paperwork. Hey, I right? guess. Like, he just didn't care enough. Yeah. So we get across the border and we're like, okay. And Tony goes, see, I told you. It's nothing. All right. Night, we all go to sleep. Next day, wake up. Okay, we got to do this like three more times to get everything that Tony needs for two months. Every night, same thing. At this point, the, the, the two cops that are there, it's like the same. The one guy was there like the whole, all four nights. He's like expecting us to, hey, guys, you have a good time tonight? Cool. Yeah, we're good. Thanks. All right. Hey, did you go to that bar More yet? boxes. Still with boxes. More, more boxes every time. Even more. By the last night, the third night, literally, Tony's got like three boxes stacked on top of each other, and he's carrying them in his arms like a forklift. He's got so many as we're walking along. I've got like one under my arm, and I had a beer in his hand, and the, you know, the other guys are with us. Everybody's carrying a box. But Tony's like a forklift walking with this. Like, hey, what are you doing? Like, hey, guys, you hit that bar yet? Just right across. <laughs> so we're done. We've got everything. But Tony's like, hey, let's hang out. Let's party now. You know, the stress is over. We're good. And I'm thinking the stress is over. We're in El Paso, Texas. You got to drive all the way to Philadelphia. With right. Fucking- we are 1,500 miles away from home with enough illegal drugs to get us all locked up for the next 10 years. Easy. But Tony's like, ah, no, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Okay, so we're going to go partying. So the three nights that we had been there, there's this bartender who we ended up talking to. It was really cute. Sexy as fuck. Might have been a guy. Um, looked like a chick. Might have been a guy. Don't know. Never found out. Thank God. Um, but behind the bar, she's pretty sexy. I still think she might have been a guy. But when you're that fucked up, it's Mexico. You know, you know how it is. <laughs> Whatever. Who gives yeah. a shit? It's, yeah. So but we're talking to her. And she had told us. One of the guys that we were with that brought up the whole thing about, is the donkey show real? See, I always thought the donkey show was in um, was in uh, Tijuana. Well, that's where I had heard yeah. originally. Like, you hear that story. It's Tijuana. Yeah. But again, Tijuana's for the tourists. Like I said, after being in Juarez for like a weekend, I was like, wow, Tijuana's just a joke. Like, you know why nobody ever talks about this town. Mexico doesn't even want to admit that this town exists. Yeah. Like, they'll tell you about Tijuana. Oh, yeah, you can go to get tequila. They don't want to talk about Juarez. <laughs> so somehow the conversation comes. She's like, oh, yeah, it happens. And I'm like, bullshit. That's it's bullshit. There's no way. It, it doesn't, you know, whatever. No, 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 it's true. So we've been talking over a couple nights. So finally, this is, you know, night number four. Where it's a party night. I am fucked up on a rainbow collection of pills at this point. I don't even, couldn't even tell you what I've, t- I just, you know, whatever. Everybody is. We're just, we're, I mean, just gone. Fuck it. We're going to go find a donkey show. I, it's got, whatever. We're asking everybody, how do you go see the donkey show? How do you go? When you, now, again, to fill in the story, outside of every bar, club, whatever you want to call them, I would not call them clubs, but outside of every one of them, there's just lines of taxis. And I don't know if you've ever been to foreign countries or gotten out of an airport at, at Mexico or any one of the South American countries. They're always out there. Hey, where are you going? What do you need? What you got to do? What you doing? Even a vacation. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, Heather and I recently went to Cancun for a week for vacation. And the hilarious part was stepping out of the airport in Cancun and just all these cabbies. Are, where are you going? What do you need? What can I do for you? I'll get you there. You need this. You need that. They're just on you. Mm-hmm. Well, in Juarez, it's the same thing. But it's all illegal. What do you need? You need this, you need that, you need drugs, you need prostitutes, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're not getting anywhere in the bars asking people. People are kind of, actually kind of blowing us off. So we go outside, and I just start talking to cabbies. Like, listen, we want to go to a donkey show. They're trying to sell us crack out of the trunk of their cars. You know, I, I know hookers down the street, whatever. They're all pissing me off. No donkey show, no donkey show, whatever. Finally, this one guy comes up to me, and he's like, hey, yo, how you doing, man? What's going on? Hey. Yeah, I hear you walking up and down the street talking to people. Yeah, I'm looking for the donkey show. He goes, no, no, no. I don't know nothing about the donkey show. But listen, I got a girl in the back of my car. She's going to fuck all of you. It's going to be the best you ever had. I'm like, wait. 
in the back of your car. Hey, man, right in the corner. You come see. Look, man, I show you. She fuck all of you right now, right in the car. Okay, we got to see this. Like, how do you not want, want to at least see what the hell this is really about? So he takes us around the corner, and there's his cab. And he opens up the cab door, and he's not lying. In the back of the car. Now, I'm going to try and put this in a context for you that you can visualize. You've seen Star Wars, right? Yeah. Okay, the original Star Wars. All of those creatures that were in the bar in the beginning on Tatooine. Yeah. Like the nastiest, ugliest creatures you've ever seen. Yeah. They are Miss America compared to what this chick looked like. This was the skankiest. I mean, I, I literally think that her pussy was falling off. Uh, like, I feel like uh, she's in the back seat. He opens the back door. She is spread eagle in the back seat. Her hands are up against his seat in the back window, and she's just there. And here is this pussy. And it was like, it was almost like, it reminds me of like a cartoon where like flies are flying uh, around. I, 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 I totally understand. You know, I and it. I mean... The Here visualization was so bad that you could imagine what it must have smelled like. Oh, and when he opened up I, the cab door, it just wafted into oh, you. See, it was a bad situation. Okay. Well, no, I'm, I'm really trying to get you there I, with you, me. I'm there. I'm I trying got, to I got there. it. I, I'm there. So right away, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. This, my buddies are all like, holy shit, he really doesn't. And we're looking at her going, well, that's not a hooker. That's just a garbage bag in the back of a car. But I'm, I'm curious. I'm like... <laughs> I'm curious. I mean, you're curious. I'm fucked up, man. Hold on. I'm fucking, I'm, uh, I'm hammered. I'm done. But I'm uh, curious. So I said to the guy, just out of pure curiosity, how much? You got to know, right? You got to know. Like, he knows. You got to know. How much? The guy looks at me and he does a little Mexican thing where he pulls on his beard. He goes, Lita, man, I got to tell you. I got to charge you at least $20 because he's my sister. Oh, my God. Ugh. No bullshit. Is that real? Are that, you serious? This, this is what the guy said to us. I've got to charge you at least twenty dollars. That reminds me of the Bo Rat thing where he says his girl his <laughs> is the best. Uh, this is best in town. Or, oh. There are things that happen in movies that I truly believe are derived from real life. Of course, yeah. And this was absolutely one of those things. Like you've seen it in movies. My sister's a hooker. This is that situation in real life where somebody experienced this before and wrote it and it became part of a movie like it, it, it this guy stand and i mean he was so casual about it and well you know hey look man i gotta card you at least twenty dollars because he's my sister get the fuck out of here mm. All okay right. uh no thank you we're good we are at this point now walking away because I'm like, look, if you don't know where the donkey show is, we don't give a fuck. You know, none of us are hitting that. You know, there's not enough penicillin in the world to cure whatever she's got. And I don't think 10 body condoms would help either. You would eat right through it like acid. <clears throat> so, and this is the mild part of the story. Um, so we're walking away. That's it. We're done with this. He's following us. Come on, man. $15, $15. I think he got down to like $5 before we were like, dude, fuck off. You know, like seriously. So we're at, we're back talking with all the cabbies. And this one cabbie finally comes up to us. He goes, hey, yo, you guys looking to go see the donkey show? Isn't my Mexican accent really good too, by the it's, way? Yeah. It may be offensive to Mexicans, but yeah, I, I it's 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 okay. So anyway. Okay. I just I think I do a really good job with it. It's a good you know, I'm okay with it. So anyhow, he says to us, Hey, you guys looking for the donkey show? Why would it be offensive? I think it's pretty accurate. I, it's not. Oh, okay. It's not it's horrible. But keep going. I know what you're going for. It's fine. Okay. As long as you understand. I mean, it's your show. You finally find a cow driver that knows where the donkey show is. Well, he's telling us that he does. Oh. Okay. And we don't have a whole lot of choice but to believe him. Right. I mean, what the hell do we know about this area? <laughs> so he's telling us, he's like, listen, you know, I'll take you to the donkey show. Well, how far away is it? Not far at all. Not far. Well, what does that mean? Uh, not far. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll take you there. All right. So, you know, obviously there's five of us, four of them cram in the back seat. I end up getting in the front seat with the guy. He's got your typical stereotypical Mexican cab. 
Right. He, he, you know, he's got stuff hanging in the cab, and you know, he's got the the seat covers that are a little plush. And I mean, this is definitely the '70s, '80s Mexican cab story, you know. Um, so we're laughing about that. So just to give you a frame of reference, Juarez is literally Juarez and El Paso are literally just two towns in a desert. Yeah. You know, divided by a river. It's like Vegas, man. Once you leave the city. It's desert for hundreds of miles. Well, this is the same situation. On one side is Mexican desert. On the other side is U.S. desert. And they're just little towns. They're just towns. Once you leave these towns, it's not like there's suburbia. It's not like, you know, driving out of a major city in the U.S. and you're driving through suburban land. And there's yeah. No. Once you leave the town, that's it. It's desert. Yeah. It's just, it's, that's all it is. So he's, we're in this cab and he's driving and he finally leaves the town. I don't know if you've ever been in the desert in the middle of the night, whether it be in Vegas or any desert, it is pitch black. Right. You see not, there's no street lights. There's no ambient city light. It's just, it's just black. Yeah. And if it is a moonless night, it is even, you can't see your hand like here in front of your face. He leaves Juarez and we're out into the desert. And all you see are the headlights of the car on what I am assuming is a road. You can't even tell. It's dirt. You can't even really tell if you're on a road or just driving in the desert. Nothing out this window, nothing out that window. You can't see anything. I'm even trying to, are there any stars out tonight? Is there anything that will identify us that we are still on a planet Earth? The four guys in the backseat are just done. Tony is blitzed out of his mind. He has no clue where we are, what we're doing. We've literally, for about an hour, just been carrying him around. He's just gone. I don't know whether he took too much of his own shit or what, but he's just done. I'm, at this point, my, my drunk is worn off, but I got a little bit of coke in my pocket. I keep bumping it to keep going. I'm, you know, I'm still a little wired. <clears throat> about 30 minutes goes by. We're in a Mexican cab with a Mexican driver in Mexico, driving in the desert, Middle of the night, 30 minutes have gone by. I'm starting to have thoughts in my head that this is it. Yeah. We're, yeah, yeah. we're done. Yeah, you know? He's going to pull off the side of the road, shoot us all in the head. There's going to there's gonna be five guys waiting for us. Exactly. Yeah. This is what's going like. I'm And I'm asking, you, well, how much further? Not much further. Uh, okay. Can you at least give me an idea how much longer I have to live so right. I know how many times I need to say that rosary and Hail Mary to forgiveness for everything I've done? Something. And he, no, 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 don't worry about it. And I mean, the longer this goes, the more I, I, the guys in the back seat are just, they're still drinking. They've got bottles. They're, they're not even focused on this thought. But this is the thought that's going through my head. Like, we're five American guys. They've been watching us all week. They know we've got money. They know, yeah. you know, that's it. We're done, you know. About 45 minutes. And I'm thoroughly convinced we're dead. And so your, your, your fight or flight mechanism starts to go on in your head. Like, when he stops the car, what do I do? At one point, you're so fucked up that you honestly think, I could take him. I, I could, we, we, could, we could survive this. And then reality sets in. We have no guns. We're fucked up. He's not going to do this alone. It's going to be dudes with AK-47 standing there, and they're going to do this slow and painfully because it's what they do in the movies when they torture you in Mexico. It's never just a bullet to the head. Yeah. They always want to torture you. And I'm, I'm like, nah, we're, we're, we're fucking done. You know? Well, am I going to fight to the death, or am I just going to get on my knees and cry like a bitch? I don't know. You know? Like, you, you, these things are going through your head, you know? Off in, the, off in the distance, now it's been about 45 minutes, off in the distance, there is a light. And we're driving toward it. And I am convinced that this is where we're going to die. <laughs> This is, they're waiting for us here. The closer we get, the more you start to realize that this is a house or a barn. It's some sort of a structure in the distance. Right. We pull up. It is a house slash barn. I don't know, really know how to explain this. It was not a house, yet it was not a barn. It was a combination of the two. Pull up. He stops the car. Hey, we're here. What do you mean we're fucking here? We're here. Go inside. Talk to the lady. Watch the donkey show. What? What are you going to do? I'll wait here. Seriously, you're going to wait here? Yeah. I'll give you $500 if you're here when we get back. Just just be here. Because who the fuck knows where we are? Yeah. If this guy takes off. Uh -huh. It's not like you have a cell phone. 
Yeah, this was at a time where I think I was actually still carrying a pager back then. Nice. That's not going to help you. Yeah, it's not doing anything. I don't even know if I brought it with me. I think it was just there. Well, it would beep in your pocket at it when you were when they bury you. Yeah, the shell it, it, that would be, be you know beep 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 beep. beep. That's not going to. That would be the noise still be making. So you know, okay, just stay here. No, no, no. You go inside. It's cool. You're going to enjoy it. So we open the door and we go in, and it turns out that this is a brothel. It's. Again, I don't. If you've never traveled to South America, and now later on in my life having wrestled, I have, but not where you were. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Um, I mean, I've been to Acapulco. I've been to Cancun a few times. So you've been to all the bitch places. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> wow. You didn't go where real men that go. Was, no, I did not. <laughs> okay. No, I did not. So anyhow, when you go to some of these third world countries in South America, <laughs> um, <that> clip. <laughs> That has to be a clip. In yeah. fact, I want that one. Me calling him a bitch and things like that. It'll be funny. Um, so anyhow, the, how the whorehouses work in a lot of these countries is they're, they're actually like bars. And you go in and it's a bar and you'll sit at the bar and you have to order a certain amount of drinks and the girls are walking around. And what they'll do is the madam will come up and introduce you to a, the group of girls. And you have a drink with one or two of them and decide this and then you go off and you do your thing. Well, this is my first time ever experiencing this in a foreign country. So we're walking in, and it's a bar. And in girl, a foreign country. In a foreign country. I, okay. He caught that one. <laughs> See, he's good like that. Um, so we walk in, and there's a lady at the front desk, and you know, she's like, hey, you know, go have a drink, enjoy yourselves, whatever. So we go to the bar. We're having a drink. And a bunch of the girls start coming around. And I'm like, again, these are just like, no. It's, it's just... It's bad. I'm not that fucked up yet. Yeah. I, I don't think I'll ever be that fucked up. There's just, there's no way. Like, these are like, like old tires, worn out. Like, the, the tread is showing. It's it's just, it's, it's, oh. Some yeah. of them are old enough to be my grandmother. I mean, just, it's like, no. It's not happening. Like, no way. So I'm talking to the girl who's behind the bar, and I'm like, yo, we're here to see the donkey show. And she's like, eh, you don't want to see that. And I'm like, yeah, it's the fuck? It's what we came here for. Yeah. I want to see the donkey show. And I'm like harassing this girl. And she's starting to get pissed. I'll be right back. And she walks away. And I'm like, That's it. Now we're just going to get the shit beat out of us by like five big bouncers that are just hanging out. A couple minutes later, she comes out with a lady who may very well have held the record, the Guinness World Record for the oldest hooker, hooker of all time. She comes out and apparently through conversation, I have figured out that she runs the place. What'd you want? Wait, what do you mean? Like, she didn't tell you? You want to see Donkey Show? Yes, I want to see the fucking Donkey Show. No Donkey Show. Well, what do you mean no Donkey Show? Donkey's tired. <laughs> the fuck you mean the donkey's, donkey's tired? tired? We just drove 45 minutes. I thought we were going to get killed. We've got cash. I want to see the Donkey Show. No Donkey Show. Too late. Donkey tired. Look, how much is the Donkey Show? $50 person. I'll give you 100 bucks for each of us. We just want to see the Donkey Show. What do you fucking mean the donkey's tired? How is the donkey tired? Hey, you fuck two girls four times a day. Tell me you're not tired at the end of the night. Oh, my God. In reality, you really couldn't argue with that. No, no. It, 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 is there donkey Cialis at this time? Is there? Oh, I'm going to explain to you what donkey Cialis is very uh, shortly. Uh, that was a very, very interesting, poignant question to ask. I'm getting better at this. You are. You're anticipating, and it's good. <laughs> so, at any rate, I'm like, I don't give a fuck if the donkey's dead. We just, I mean, I would have, but, you know. They probably need more donkeys. That's the real problem. That's what I'm thinking, too. In Wouldn't America, you have a few of them? A few donkeys. They'd have a, a bunch yeah. of them, but apparently they only have one. So the lady says, hang on, I'll be back in a minute. All right. Meanwhile, there's just these hookers drooling all over us, and, like, it's like, just go stand over there. I'm like, does anyone have an alcohol wipe, please? And, you know, just don't talk, just there. Five minutes later, the man comes out. Okay, donkey show, $150 each. Fucking lady's a hell of a negotiator. Yeah. Obviously, she knows she's got us by the short and curly. So, fuck it. Cool. Okay. One minute, I come get you. All right. I think this was all a ploy to leave us out there as long as possible to see if we'd finally fuck one of the girls. Comes back out. Follow me. Okay. Takes us through the establishment. I don't know what else to call this place. Opens a door. This cubicle that we are in is 
very close to the size of the room that we were taken into. Might have been a foot wider on each side, maybe equal around. Let, let, let's call it somewhere between 10 by 10 and 10 by 15. A little dark, a little hard to tell. I was fucked up, but this is the size. Takes us into this room. It is, there are bleachers on the walls, three, three seat bleachers, one, two, three for sitting on each wall. In, in this, this, in this little, space. in this little space, it's there. I mean, you're like, you're, okay. you're, you're, you're in there. Like there's no joke in the middle of the floor is a circle that is probably four feet in the middle of the room with a post in the circle is dirt, sawdust, who the, I, probably a hundred years of feces there. I don't, I don't know what the hell it was. <laughs> I want you to, before you, I want you to get the visualization about this. So you understand three bench bleachers. The top bench is your back's against the wall. Right. The second bench, you're there. The first bleacher, the first one, the first down on the floor, your feet are on the edge of this circle that's four feet wide. Right. So you're literally right on this thing. My brain automatically tells me, I'm going to sit as far away from this as I can. Yeah. So I'm up here on the third high bleacher. My buddies, one sits here, which sits there. Tony who is fucking gone, sits in the first bleacher on the floor. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and he's just, ah, fuck, what the fuck are we doing? Ah, fuck, ah, fuck, ah, no idea. I, I want to give you the sensation of this. <laughs> I, I have to, it, it gets graphic now. <laughs> now, as opposed to I told you as opposed to those the, those were the tame parts of the story I want you to imagine a refrigerator I want you to imagine that every kind of deli meat ever oh, bought uh, I, I hear you is in I this understand refrigerator no your, view, your viewers need to hear this my viewers they need to understand because it's difficult every kind of deli meat that has ever invented is in this refrigerator. There are certain kinds of German cheeses that are in this refrigerator. The refrigerator power went off six months ago. At some point, a yak took a shit in this refrigerator and you opened the door of this refrigerator. And this is what it smells like in the room? Uh-huh. Okay. Very much so. Have you ever had smelling salts go hit you in the nose before to wake yeah. you up? Okay. This is the opposite of that. Okay. It's that same burning, stinging sensation, but it makes you want to vomit as opposed to makes your, well, your eyes were watering for sure, mm. but it makes you want to vomit. Okay. You're sitting there, actually, you're so enthralled by the smells in this room that your brain is actually trying to identify them because you need to know because it's frightening what it could be. You would, honest to God, be very surprised how quickly you adjust to this. The fact that my friends, I didn't smoke, but two of my friends were lighting up cigarettes, trying to just, this is how they're going to breathe. They'd rather breathe cigarette smoke constantly than smell this. Lights are on. It's just like this. White room. <clears throat> we're there maybe two minutes. Okay. Room goes pitch black. I'm now feeling like I'm going to get raped by something because, again, locked this small room. A spotlight then appears in the center of the room down into this circle. A little Mexican man. What was, what was that coffee from Colombia? Whatever it was with the little Mexican on the front and he had the donkey. What? The, the, the Juan Pablo coffee or Juan Perez. I don't remember what the name of it was, but this was this is the image in my head. Okay. It was a little man walking, and he, it was a picture of him, and he was pulling a donkey, and he had coffee beans in the donkey sack. This little Mexican man, who's probably 80, 90 years old, or at least that's what he looked, comes out with a donkey on a leash. He comes up to the post. And when is I say this comes a normal out. Size, normal sized donkey? I mean, yeah, based on donkeys, sure. It was, you know. Well, they had miniature donkeys. No, it wasn't a miniature. It definitely was not a miniature. Um, <laughs> so he comes out, and he takes the leash from the donkey, and he ties it to the pole, and he puts a feed bag on the pole, and the donkey just sticks its head in the feed bag. The donkey never took its head out of the feed bag. 
the entire show. It never stopped eating whatever was in the feed bag. The little Mex- little, little donkey Viagra. I, who, pr- donkey Viagra. Very well could have been. That's I never thought of that. I always just assumed it was oats and grains or something. Something like a this, salt think, But when was this? What year? 94, 95. Yeah, I think was Viagra, Viagra was out. Right? Yeah, was I don't even remember. I think it was out. I think it was. I remember making jokes about it. Yeah, you know? yeah, those fucking guys. Those guys. <laughs> now at 50, I'm like, yeah, God bless my yeah. medical science. Um, that's what testosterone's for. Um, so anyhow, no, I didn't just say that, by the way. Yeah, I did. Um, so he ties the donkey to the post, and he leaves, closes the door. I'm guessing it was Mexican music that that started to play hard to tell wasn't really the best speaker system it, this was definitely not a high quality establishment right and that's part of it though. So, yeah you're right it added right. to the ambiance that yeah, was for yeah. sure I mean, it was a big arena like where your guys play it wouldn't have, and, and it was good speakers and it was good camera system wouldn't have had, you would have never had this story you would have been like that was an amazing experience yeah but I'd have made millions selling that video oh, God. So, okay, so anyhow, oh, now, wish, again. I wish you had a cell phone back then, right? You oh, could, yeah, I'd have been like, you could have been like, oh, dude, you don't even know. Holy I'd, shit, look at this. I don't know what streaming platform would have let me show that, but I would have been like all over the place with it. So now, this donkey's tied to this post. Now, we remember that Tony is sitting in the front row. Tony is petting the donkey. He's this close to the donkey. <laughs> he has no idea. He's fucked up. It's going to be okay. Hey, hey. the donkey. Hey, the pet. And I'm, I'm like, stop touching the donkey. Stop. <laughs> don't, don't touch that. <laughs> I mean, literally, he's... here. The coffee cup is the donkey. His head is here. This is how close he is to this donkey. Because he's on his knees like this, watching this whole thing. And he's this close. And I'm thinking, there's nothing about this is going to end well, ever. It's just not going to happen. So this music comes on. And the door opens again, and one quarter of the room was a door. That's how they, we got in. Everybody yeah. keeps getting in and out. In comes, I've explained to you, the girl in the cab, how nasty she was. I've talked about the lovely women that were in this establishment and how horrible they were. These two win the prize. We have now reached a whole new level of Dante's Inferno. Okay. If there is a bottom of the barrel, these <laughs> girls were three feet under that. They were probably very nice people. You know, I never asked. I, I didn't really feel the need to find out their life stories. Listen, it's, it, it's, it's probably, they probably had a very hard life. Oh, you could tell by looking at them they had a really hard life. There was no doubt about that. Uh, so the, two women come out? Two, two, two. Calling them women might be... A gener- uh, might be a generosity. I don't know. Well, no, they were definitely because one of them had what I thought I, was, was pussy. Um, so they come out and they're dancing around the donkey. Whatever kind of Mexican Latino thing they're doing, <clears throat> and this goes on for a minute or two. I want you to bear in mind during this whole time, Tony is still petting the donkey. <laughs> this is his thing. This is he's petting this donkey. He's scratching the head. He's and I'm still kicking him. Stop touching the donkey. These girls strip their clothes off, which didn't help at all. Really only made things worse. We are all sitting here very quietly. It's that, that, it's that moment of shame. and <laughs> Like you're in church and you know that the priest is going to just rain hellfire on you for having been there. You're, you're very calmly sitting. Tony is, I don't even want to talk about what Tony's covered in, uh, and still has no idea. The madam walks into the room, thanks us all, then proceeds to let us know that if any of us would like to fuck either one of the girls, oh. that'll be an additional $50 per girl. Ah, oh. I shit you not. My friend who's sitting here next to me throws up. <laughs> Everything we had just witnessed wasn't enough to make someone throw up, but the idea of banging these two girls after all of that, he just starts spewing. We're all sitting here very calmly. We collect ourselves. We leave the room. 
The cab driver has waited for us. We very calmly, quietly, very soberly at this point, take the long drive back to Juarez, get out of the cab, take the walk across the bridge. Did you guys hit that bar yet? Not yet. You should. I think we're done. Go back to our hotel. I spent Shower? two hours showering. Okay. I mean, there wasn't enough soap. There wasn't enough anything to get this feeling off of me. We all wake up the next day. No one has spoken yet. Not a word has been said between <laughs> any of us. We go to breakfast at a little place down the street, which had great Mexican breakfast, eggs, and really good stuff, huevos. We rent the car. We load up all the boxes in the car. We proceed to drive home. It was somewhere around Tennessee where we finally decided we were going to speak to one another. And what is the question that everybody has? Did, did, did you guys get hard to at any point oh, during that? Jesus. Oh. Who said that? Who asked that question? I'm not going to say it wasn't me. <laughs> but, you know, God. we all went home, and I, I tell you the God's honest truth, for about four years, not one of us ever told this story to anybody. We never talked about it. I didn't start telling people about this story till about maybe 10 years ago. So for me, almost 15 years had gone by before I even spoke about this story. The problem is even now, I've been sitting here laughing and joking. I'm, every time I tell this story, the visualizations and the odors begin to permeate and I can smell it oh. and f I can feel it again. And it almost makes me sick to think about it. So for those of you that are wondering, yes, there really is a donkey show. Oh God, what, what do you think hell's gonna be like? Anything would be better than that. Anything would be better uh, than that. I don't think I'm going to hell because I think that was my uh, moment in purgatory. Uh, I feel like that was my you punishment. You paid for this, and you paid for this. Yeah, yeah, $150 each for five guys. Oh God. We paid for it. In more ways than one, we paid for it. <clears throat> Needless to say, we made it all the way back with the drugs, though. We were good. Oh, oh, silver lining. Which was the point of the whole trip to begin with. Oh. <sighs> wow, that's not... <laughs> uh. I don't know what you want me to tell you. You said, come back, do my show again. Tell one of your stories. I'm going to end it. Hey, I got, I got a great story for next time, too. Oh, Jesus. All right. Oddly enough, it has to do with Mexico again, too. Oh, my God. All right. I'm so sorry if you've watched this long. <laughs> hey, listen. Throughout this whole thing, I'm going to get yelled at by Heather if I don't mention, hey, listen, guys, I do own a wrestling company. Yeah. All, all in all, I am actually a professional wrestler. I own a wrestling company. Check us out. All of your social media platforms, UCWverse, V-E-R-S-E, -E, at UCWverse. You can check us out on all social media. You can also find us at UCWverse.com. Or if you're in the local area, the Tampa Bay area, the Sarasota Manatee County area, you can come to one of our shows. We do it the third Sunday of every month, and you can get your tickets at UCWtickets.com. And now I'll be able to go home tonight and have dinner without my girlfriend beating my ass for not promoting the show. Well, it's it's verse verse like into the verse like okay. universe verse yeah, yeah. UCW verse okay like your well, you know. was universe taken because well, it's universe it's right? a long fucking word though okay I'm just saying I and mean, the name of the company is Universal Championship I, Wrestling that's what I'm saying I was just so wondering why I was you, just wondering, wondering if it's probably taken it's probably well, taken. I don't know but it was just a long word and you know people on the internet are lazy so the shorter you can make something the better yeah yeah that's not what she said but you know <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself if you watch this <laughs> you're still watching <laughs> and you're catholic you should go to confession all right thanks so much for doing this <laughs> 
right. I will never get the last minute call again. So, I so wish the other guy had come. Okay. So I I appreciate you watching. Please please subs please don't don't unsubscribe. Like I can't ask you to subscribe. Feel free to trash me in the comments. I mean I love it. And uh, leave a comment. Please. Share the video. <laughs> Not with your priest. <laughs> yeah. And our, it, I'll see you guys around. See you. <laughs> so disgusting, bro.